welcome back to UK Diver. It's your first time here, then just welcome. I'm very glad you're here. I know I'm very glad to be here. But the question is, where are we today? Well, we're back in Pembroke. We're down here to do something a little bit different. And to be honest with you, I've just done it. So I'm kind of recording the intro at the back end of the weekend. So I've come down to help with a scallop survey. We have been diving in and around the Skooma Marine zone. So I saw a sort of shout out from one of the skippers that I used, Dave, and I'll leave a link down to the Pembroke video that I did last year, where you'll see Dave from Pembroke Boat Charters put a post up saying that the local branch, I guess, of Natural Resources Wales looking for some volunteer divers to help with the scallop survey. And I thought, you know what, that sounds bloody brilliant. I've never done anything like that before. You know, a bit of citizen science, getting involved a bit more, and I really fancied it. So I signed up. Now, in a typical fashion, we come down on Friday, and yesterday, Saturday, was blown out. And as you probably hear on the microphone, it has been a bit windy. So the swell and the sea was pretty horrific yesterday. But we did manage to get out today, and we have had, I've, I've had an absolute blast, I'll be honest with you guys. It's, it's been work, it has been work. It's not just about the diving, you've got to do all the processing afterwards. But it's been an absolute blast. It's been something very different from the kind of stuff that I normally do. So. Let's take a look and I'll tell you what it's all about. So guys, the Skoma Marine Conservation Zone was initially set up back in 1990 and since that time you've not been able to take scallops at all from this area which includes Skoma Island and all of the Marlowe's Peninsula. Now, Back in 1985, when a sort of first survey was done, it was worked out that there was only one scallop per 100 metres squared and that's not a lot. Now, as you will see, over the years, with this protection that's been in place where you can't fish for scallops anymore, the numbers have dramatically increased. So on the day we had two boats of divers and we were going to survey seven sites in total. Sorry Seagull, no fishes for you today. Okay, go Andy. Go. So guys, how we actually did the survey was when we got to the bottom of the shot line, which are predefined sort of survey areas that they've been doing since the sort of 2000s. We wheeled this tape out to 30 meters, left the tape there, turned around, then went back to the shot line, collecting all the scallops that we could within a one meter sort of radius from the edge of the tape. So I did one side, my buddy did the other side, and obviously 30 meters out by two meters wide gives you a 60 meter square survey area. Now the posh name for this survey area is a transec. Now when we got to the bottom of the shot line and all the other groups were the same, we got given a direction to go in. So on this particular dive, we got to the bottom and then we headed due north. So we did a 60 meter strip due north of the buoy. Oh, look at this little cute one. He's only a baby, but uh, lo and behold, I, I look up and uh, there's mum and dad sat on the sofa and I'm about to ruin their night. So once we caught the scallops, guys, we put them into net bags that were numbered so that when they got back on the boat, the scallops weren't mixed up and they knew which scallops had come from which transec. And at this point, I must apologize for the wobbly video. I was supposed to not be actually taking part in one of these surveys, in one of the dives. I was supposed to be with another buddy pair and so I could video them and show you what they were doing. But unfortunately, one of the divers on the boat got a bit seasick on the way out there. So I was left with little choice but to actually get my hands dirty on both dives. Mm. 
Now you see this one. So this one's a bit further than a meter away from the tape, but it still counts because this is actually a scout. You see it's nice and clean and that's because he escaped me on the first pass and managed to swim away. So uh, it was actually fair game, but you did have to make sure you didn't go too far away from the tape. You had to stay in that sort of meter along the tape, otherwise you'd fluff the survey data. So this is the end of the second pass guys and at this point I stopped videoing because it's my job to bring the tape back in so it's quite an art reading one of these in on land let alone underwater so that was quite interesting but right at the last second I'm just about to reach for the tape and I noticed this little beastie and what a crustacean infested guy this was he was absolutely covered in it <laughs> look at that what a beast. Let me introduce to Mark, he's one of the people that works for Natural Resources Wales and looks after the conservation zone and he's going to talk us through how to survey a scallop. So let's have a little listen in. You only need like a two centimetre gap down it. And then with the scrubbing brush. Now to start with all you need to do is it length first? Length, yeah, length. Yeah. So the length is from the umbo, the flat hinge, yeah. up to the very top. So that is literally take your ruler, put zero on the on the hinge, Sorry. and measure the maximum distance, and then do it in millimeters because it sounds more scientific. Okay, fine. <laughs> That's right. It sounds like we're being physicists. Yeah, yeah. So this one is 111 millimeters. Excellent. And then the width is the widest point across the scallop shell. Yeah. So find the widest point. And that one's going to be 129, something like that. So that's fairly easy. That's the first two columns done. So each row is a scallop. Yeah. And then we look at the growth rings. Now, one of the best ways to actually see where you should be looking for growth rings is to turn them onto the curved surface because okay. the growth rings are really obvious. So there's growth ring one. So yep. that's how big it was at age one. So what they do is they grow, 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 and then the winter comes in or they, or they get stressed is another thing, but the winter comes in, they get a cold shock, they stop growing, and that basically causes a thickening in the shell because everything slows down and you get a little thickening in the shell. And then spring comes and whoosh, they're off. So they grow a lot between oh, one and wow. two. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't put any energy into, into reproduction, they just grow. Between one, two and three, they're growing. Once they get to four or five, they start sharing the, the energy out between growing and actually starting to breed. So that means the growth rings slow right down. So one, two, three, and you should hopefully be able to see these on the flat side. So there's one, two, three, four, and we've got five, six, seven. This is probably an eight year old scallop. Wow. Yeah. So what you then do is again, put, put zero up against the umbo and then measure out, and you're calling out each growth ring now. So that's 19, 62, 83, 92, 98, 102, 105, and 107. Yep, that's scallop one done. Oh, we'll leave, we'll leave that one. 112. 119. So right guys, so we're aging scallops and how you tell is we're counting the growth rings on them and I'll show you a close up in a second of the growth rings. Basically you'd be surprised how quick these boys grow. So this is how you tell how old older scallop is. So this first ring here, this dark ring here, that's the first grow ring. So then in the second year, it's grown to here. Third year, can you see that line there? That's third year, fourth year, fifth year, sixth year. So there you go, you can actually age a scallop. I think that's pretty cool. So these are the guys making sure that we can see these growth rings. They're just cleaning off some of the sediment, the concrete and crud. And there's also an invasive species that sometimes lives on them as well, that we are recording as well so we've got millions of eggs not really good. Thank you. 
So guys, what I'm doing here, I've got a file, and I'm putting a little groove in the shell. I don't know if you see that. And that's apparently, so when they come out in a few weeks time, if they catch the same scallop, they know not to count it again. Deals up after a bit. So once we'd finished measuring the scallops guys, they were released back into the wild to carry on living their happy lives, but we did release them back over their survey areas, so they should be there for next time. Now, the ones with the notches in, if they're found in one of the other survey areas, because they are going out in a couple of weeks and again, repeating this survey, but in different survey areas. So if they're found, the divers will be looking for the notches and will hopefully leave them alone. But even if one or two get picked up, then they won't be counted and therefore won't fluff the survey data. It's absolutely fantastic to see the populations coming back. Now, the last time this survey was run, it was in 2016, and I will leave a link down below so you can see the public report that gives you the details on what they found there. And there will be a report done with this in due course. And I'm really fascinated to see how the numbers have grown, stay static, or what's gone on with the populations. From mine and the wife's point of view, we had an absolute blast. It was particularly good because the wife could get involved. You don't have to be a diver to get involved with these kind of things. As long as you can use a ruler and you can count, you're pretty much sorted because really the work is about processing the scallops after they've been caught. But we had a whale of a time and loved it. So yeah, that's it guys. We have done the scallop survey. There were a few let's put it that way now do check the guys out and keep an ear to the ground because they're always looking for these volunteers i know in two weeks time they're doing a nudibranch survey but unfortunately i'm tied up with going to lanzarote and uh, you know no pennies no time the usual things that stops us from doing what we want to do I'm making that one, which is a shame because I'd learnt to learn about more nudibranchs, same as I've learnt about scallops. I've learnt so much this weekend just by talking with people in the know. And I think that's one of the things I really love about diving is you just can't learn everything. There's always something to learn. There's always something to know extra. And I just think that's one of the, for me, it's one of the things I love about it. So that's it guys. If you found this video at all useful, then please do give it a like. If you like this video and the content, well, please do think about subscribing. It does help me out. And if you hit the little notification bell, you will be notified, obviously, when I upload new content. As always, I will see you beautiful people on the next one.